Welcome to Honest Science Tube. Today I like to take a step back from the previous episode and I like to address some issues that have come up at the comments. The first issue, or the first thing, is my confusion with the fact that the EB image program, or the EB image package, sorry, produces three frames per image. This is a simple reason I've depicted here. The reason is that it does, that it decodes uh, the color information for each picture. So a blue, a red, and a green color information. Those are the three colors produced by each and every pixel in the monitor of my computer to create the illusion of any other of any other color. If this is relevant for me to see or to <laughs> believe that there is an actual picture there. Okay, this is a science tube, not philosophical tube. So um, let's go ahead to the next issue. The next issue addresses the use of the uh, uh, the threshold command in R. And to explain what I may be done wrong, uh, I have to make a few steps towards statistics, which involves math. The problem is as follows. At the description of the EB image package says that the Otsu method needs or assumes a bimodial distribution. No, it assumes a bimodial distribution. So what is a distribution? If we say this are the counts for something and those are something else like intensities, and we have a distribution like this then we speak of a Gaussian distribution. The bimodial distribution is look like this, like a camel. Hmm. And you might say, or I might say, that this pretty looks like the histogram of the image I've shown to you for showing that there are three frames necessary to decode the full information of the picture. But those pictures that are taken in the dark have actually a distribution something like this. And this is actually not bimodial. It resembles more a hypergeometric distribution. I don't want to go into the mathematics, actually, because it's, at least for me, quite complicated. But it is worth keeping in mind that I might dedicate some episodes to this. Oh, no! Don't, don't, don't ever make promises on the internet. It's dangerous. The next issue is probably the most important one. Bias by light. It simply means that if light enters the camera system, it does, so to speak, override the effect of the presumed detection of radiation with a camera. So I ask myself if I can devise a method with the help of R and the EB image package to see if it's possible to say if there is bias by light in the picture. For short, by pure appliance of basic statistical means. That sentence was convoluted. Well, let's start. I've already loaded the EB image package uh, and I want to load now an epic, an epic, no, a package developed also by the Bioconductor guys and girls. Thank you for that. It's called the RHDF5 package and it does provide an interface to a hierarchical data format which enables me to store data from R directly onto my hard drive without bumping into the memory limitations of R. What are those limitations? Basically, you can imagine that R uh, works with the random access memory of your computer. And if this random access memory is full, R will basically say, nope, 
without me, buddy. And since every picture is around well, roughly 400 megabytes big, it is very good to store them somewhere else and just bring them forth if I want to do some work on it. For the method, I further need the for each package. So I load it. Yeah, it's just uh, explaining itself. Isn't it nice? Thank you, Revolution Analytics. Um, maybe what I do next for some for experienced users may be seen seem awkward, but this is what I come up with. Mm. At first, I have to change the working directory of R to another directory, actually, on my notebook. It is, as you can see, a file onto my disk number D. And uh, there I like to create a HDF file with the command h5 create file and I like to name this file images.h5 what? I'm sorry, I have this already? oh no! cut! Problem solved. Just deleted the old file. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> I'm sorry. My unprofessional self broke through. I promise that will never happen again. <laughs> okay, and next I like to create a group within this file so that I can refer to this group if I like to write image data to this file. Yet I do this with the h5 create group command in which I have to specify the file images.h5 and the name of the group uh, which I like to name image list. Seems good. Now I want to have a look at this file with the h5ls command and the name of the file. Here I can see uh, that there's actually a group with the name image list in there. Next I have to specify where all the pictures are I have taken. I have stored them on a removable uh, on the flash drive actually and I like to create a list where all the path information is stored which list now with this list I like to create then a for each loop which loops through the image command and right away writes the image data into the hdf5 file quite a plan let's start I create now an object called path list. In the command list files, actually list the files found in this directory I've specified here that matches following mm, details. The string jp dot jpg in their name, which basically is the uh, image format here. And I want the list files command to display the full names of all those files found. <clears throat> data, 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 there. And as you can see, here is the path list, path 
list the path list path list no. sorry I have to make sure that my frontal lobe is working path list <clears throat> so now what exactly is a for each loop a loop in R is as far as I understand just the repetition of one particular command like here in this example read image again and again and again now I like to create a for each loop to write each and every photo to the HDF5 file At first, I like to uh, have an have a, a R object called image, which is simply the read image command from the EB image package on uh, the entry in the path list that has the same uh, number as the variable of the for each loop. Then I like this image to be written into the RHDF5 file. I do this with the h5 write command. The object is the image. The file name is images.h5. And now comes the tricky part. Um, because I have to give every file a unique name I take the past command which just makes any character strings into or variables into a character string and it uh, will be images list image and then I plus 100. So why the 100? Um, it seems that the files are not are uh, sorted by the digits and not by the numbers. So if I have the number 1 to 10, then the 10 just comes after 1 and so the original the, the original order of the files um, is destroyed so uh, I know I have only 38 pictures so there's only two digits and if I assign numbers with three digits so to speak from 101 to 138 then it will hopefully not be uh, scrambled up or something worse so I hope I have write this code in the right way and let's get started And here we are finished. Let's see if all files are written in the right place. <clears throat> Ooh, this looks very good. We have 38 pictures and they are all in the group images.list. Now I like to analyze all these pictures. At first I like to have a broad overview with the summary function. And 
because uh, I think this would be quite a while uh, but I think this maybe cost some time so I like to do this in parallel though it is at least in my understanding not possible to write files to the HDF5 format in parallel it is possible to read them in parallel so at first I like to set up a cluster I do a P uh, SOCK cluster which is basically a copy of R running on each node with three nodes because one node or one CPU one of my four CPUs will be um, busy recording things and so on mm. next I have to tell the cluster uh, how to use or how to deal with HDF5 files. Um, no. Oh, wrong, sorry. <laughs> He should do the, the function. That's better. So, um, and next I like to create a for each loop which uh, executes the summary command on each data set. So, summary should be the object in which this is stored. Oh, before we start, um, register to parallel cluster one, which tells uh, the for reach package on which class uh, or which parallel backend to use. So, or, or which cluster to use with a parallel execution. That's that's right, not the other way around. Okay, summary should be a new object and for each i equals 1 to 38 because I have 38 pictures in here. Oh no, do par summary the object I take from the uh, HDF5 file, h5 read is the command for that. File name is images.h5 and the name is, um, has to change, oh there's a zero too much, <laughs> no, I've, um, had to change with the uh, variable i, so I need the past command again. Um, images list image and then i plus 100 so this is the object and that should that should it I'm quite nervous. Let's go. Let's have a look what my computer does.
and we're finished. Let's do a garbage collection at last to free unused memory with no what? No effect? Oh, shame. Okay, so here is the summary uh, of each and every picture. Let's have a look at it. Um, okay, I've said it in the beginning, but I like to repeat myself. I had taken these photos without any concern of how many in which place. I just want to know if it's possible with R to determine if is if if there is a bias by light. So my first step is and this is what I do here, just to see if just by the numbers it is possible to see if the photo is um, a huge exposure or not. So Obviously, the most Im interesting thing at first is the maximum value, who, for example, here reaches this maximum 1, here it's about 0.28 and 0.27, 3 and 7, and so on and so on. So I think this is definitely worth a closer look. So um, I like to analyze all the pictures again, but now not with a broad summary, but with a emphasis of just the maximum values. So the command for now is max and the next uh, object, no, not made, max, max. <laughs> it shouldn't be as long as um, the entire summary because it's only one value per photo. Let's have a look. Oh, and it's finished already. <laughs> Here we are. Here is the list of the maximum values. Um, and because it's nicer and better to see, I like to plot this. The x values will be max and the y well, no, sorry, x is 1, 2, 38. And y is max. And here is the plot. I hope the zoom will be taken by my... No, it will not. Um, just one moment. Here we are. Okay. Um, so those are the maximum values and uh, of each and every pix pix no not pixel sorry picture just picture one picture many pixels. <laughs> so it's good to see uh, here some pictures have a huge maximum value and some pictures not. So this should suggest that that this suggests that um, there are some pictures were actually taken uh, in dark circumstances and some pictures not. Let's do the same just with the mean values. First I alter my for each loop again to produce the mean. Oops, I'm sorry. Nope. So, 
again, this should not take so long. And here we are. Those are all the mean values, and again I like to plot them like in the first one. Evil, evil screen recorder has robbed me of my last sentences. Okay, let's repeat the last step. Um, I simply had plotted the mean values against uh, 1 to 38. Here we are. I zoom this out. So in this plot it is more clearly visible that some pictures are taken in, in a lighter environment um, and uh, those pictures for example might possible that they are biased by light and I remember just placing the camera on the uh, table without any coverage so in the next video I like to devise a method how to dis determine which method of taking videos is at the least biased or in other words the best and I will try to do something really scientific with null hypothesis and hypothesis hypo hi did i mention my frontal lobe in the video hypothesis testing i will never say this again goodbye